All right, welcome everyone. I know people are trickling in, so welcome, welcome. We're excited to uh, begin our first installment of our fall webinar series. And I know folks are trickling in, so as people are coming in, we just wanna address you all and just say thank you for coming, uh, making time out of your day to tune in to our first installment of our fall webinar series. Um, so in the meantime, before we kick things off, um, just a couple of housekeeping items to share with everyone. Uh, we are doing this through um, Zoom, if you will. So just a couple of icons to pay attention. Um, so there is a Q&A icon, and that's where we ask for any questions throughout the webinar to please insert your questions there, and then we can reply accordingly. And then also there's a chat function. So there, again, a chat option, and these are for any kind of comments or anything of that nature. Feel free to put them in there. Uh, we will be responding as much as possible. We have a moderation team. Uh, that supports us as well. And at the end of the day, we want to be able to answer as many questions as possible during our time together. And then we also have fun activities. You can't have a webinar without some fun activities. So we're excited about doing that as well. All right. Excellent. So it looks like we still have a few folks trickling in. Um, so uh, in the meantime, before we kickstart our agenda, um, please locate the chat option and the chat little widget there. And just share with us uh, where are you logging in from um, and uh, giving us a little bit of insight and in what it is that you're all doing with your with your students. If you guys want to insert that into the chat box, feel free. We're just going to give it another minute or two to allow everybody to come in before we uh, talk about our agenda and what we've got installed for everyone. So in the meantime, for those that have just attended, feel free to share where you're connecting from or if you'd like to share. Uh, something interesting that you're doing uh, in your classroom at the moment. So um, excellent. And thank you. Lots of shout outs here. It looks like we've got a few folks. All right. All the way from looks like Columbia. Thank you, Jennifer. Man, awesome. And then Ricardo. Thank you from La Siendia Puente USD. All right. Fantastic. And we've got Courtney. Courtney from Chicago, Illinois dialing in. Thank you, Courtney. And we've got people from Alberta, Canada, Carbondale, Illinois. I love it. Yorkton, Canada, IT manager, awesome. Madison, Wisconsin, we've got folks from Maine, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati, Smoky Lake, Alberta, Canada. Oh my goodness, how cool. Green Bay, Wisconsin, all right, I love it. Thank you, thank you all for um, putting your, your chats there in the chat window. All right, um, I don't wanna delay us any further, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick off our agenda in just a few seconds, but again, this is very introductory level when it comes to my view board. So everyone here signed up for our webinar um, has an understanding of our my view board software. And if you're looking to deepen your understanding, well, you came to the right place. Um, so excited about that. So as you can see here in today's agenda, uh, we're really going to get you started with some of the tools and we're going to introduce them. The whole point of this webinar is to make it all conducive to your interests, to your needs. So at any point, again, reminder on the Q&A box to enter your questions and we can guide the conversation there. And then we're gonna practice lesson planning. And essentially for everyone and all, I'm sure we've done this to some capacity, uh, whether we've done it in a digital format or not, we're gonna explore that together. And then we're gonna obviously do something fun, which is my favorite part when we get into checking for understanding and we do a game out of this. So I'm excited about that piece. And at the end of the day, we're going to actually share how we can keep the conversation going by inviting you all to our ViewSonic Educator community, which actually I'm going to start that now just to give you a little inkling of what to expect towards the end, just so I can give everybody an idea what our educator community is about. All right, thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, thank you. All right. For everyone. And again, I will put this on the chat. So if you don't mind just taking a look at my screen, I'm going to navigate you and kind of give you a virtual open house of what our community is all about. So for those that don't know, and again, we record this too. So if there's any reason that you want to reference back how to get to some place, uh, you can also reference this. But the reason why I'm going to show this to you now is because there is an actual uh, mini promotion that I want to throw at everyone, especially because it's the first day of our fall installment, uh, it gives everybody an opportunity and chance to win 
uh, an awesome prize. So for those that attended and stayed throughout the whole webinar. So essentially you're gonna go through this site here. Um, this is our community landing page and I'll put this in the chat so you have the step-by-steps. But essentially our community really is about connecting all educators together and essentially continue these conversations so that we have more webinars and more access to um, different lesson plans as well as even professional development offerings that we also show in our community platform. So if you don't have my Viewboard software or you just got it and you're wondering what is the community, I'm gonna take you in uh, just now so that you can navigate and then you can do that throughout the webinar presentation and then we'll come back to it towards the very end. All right, so if we click here to join now, it's gonna take you to the single sign-on page and here you can select either one of these three platforms, or if you have, let's say, a school email address that you prefer to use to keep things separated, feel free to do that in the fill-in column. Uh, for this purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and use my single sign-on. And once you do your single sign-on, it's really gonna be very simple, right? It's gonna connect you to your existing email address. And so you go through that step, shouldn't take you too long. And then ultimately, it'll take you to this dashboard that you're looking at right now. So in this dashboard, there's various different um, buttons here. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna take you to the community button there. So if I click on the community button, it's gonna take you to our new revamped ViewSonic Educator Community Platform. So here, this is a global platform. So you're gonna see different regions from different forms at the very bottom. But at the very beginning, just to indicate, what it is that you can actually do and obtain from our community platform is there's options here to learn more about news and announcements. Also an area for you to actually say hello to the world, if you will, with our community platform and be able to introduce yourself and connect with others and as well as our learning center. So these are all options that I invite you all to navigate. Just for the sake of time, I'm actually gonna skip some of these and I'm gonna take you straight to the form. So in our form, you're gonna see the USA and Canada form. So if I click there, you're gonna see at the very top, there's a pin, if you will, to one of our events. So in this event, you'll see an introduction to my Viewboard tools, which is today's date. And this is exactly where I'd like to navigate folks. Now, you're gonna see in my end, you're gonna see an add post. But for those that are logging in for the first time, it's actually gonna ask you to join now. Now, the reason for that is you get to elect and navigate what you wanna be notified. So essentially, if you wanna participate in our contest that we'll be having today by the end of our webinar, which is essentially putting in a comment into our banner post here, you get a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card just by putting in a comment today. So if you'd like to do that throughout the webinar, or if you'd like to do that towards the very end, uh, this is something that's open, but we will actually pick a winner towards the end of our webinar presentation. So how to go about posting? I'm just going to show everyone really quickly. You simply click on that banner, and then you're able to actually write and put your thoughts here. And essentially, that's how you leave your comment. That's how we see you're participating. And this is how we invite you all to the community platform and enabling you to connect with others and also navigate and explore. Uh, more what our platform offers. All right, excellent. I know it took a lot of time there, but I wanted to essentially give everybody a quick little PSA of what our community platform is about. I'm gonna stop sharing screen, turn it over to our awesome presenter, who I have the pleasure to work with, um, and as my colleague, Ms. Haley Hunt, who's gonna navigate us. Haley, you take it away. All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much, Ruben. So a little bit about myself. My name is Haley, like Ruben mentioned. I am one of the associate product managers here at ViewSonic, and I get the pleasure of working with our view boards and also our software. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. We're gonna to be looking at my view board whiteboard. So I'm very excited to go into all the details. I believe you should all be receiving a poll question soon. Um, once you get that, go ahead and take a minute to answer that. Uh, we just wanna know what grade do you teach? Once you answer that, um, then we're ready to go. But before I get started, I wanna talk a little bit about my setup. So when we're talking about my Viewboard, one of the great things about it is that it's cross-platform compatible. What that means is that I am able to be on my computer and use it 
to show all of you here today. So I don't need to use the software with my Viewboard. I can use it with my Windows PC. So what I'm going to be using today is my Windows Surface Pro. I'm going to be using a keyboard and mouse, and I'm going to be navigating through the slides. So I will go step by step showing you how I'm using a mouse and how it would be different if you're using your Viewboard in Classroom and using touch gestures. If you don't have a Windows computer, no problem. Other things that you can use it are, of course, on your Viewboard in the Android software. You can use it on Chromebooks. You can use it on iPad, so it's available on iOS and also for MacBooks. So let's go ahead and get started. I, first of all, want to give you a brief rundown of what we're going to be looking at today. So on your screen, you should be seeing a few different arrows and some information. There's a lot of information here just because there's so many features in Whiteboard that we're going to be talking about. But I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I just want you to get acquainted with what we're going to be looking at today. And of course, if you come across any questions that you may have, please feel free to use that Q&A box. That Q&A box will allow us to be able to directly communicate with you and answer all of your questions throughout the presentation. So with that being said, let's take a look at what we have here. So first in the upper corner here, you're going to notice my name. So let me go ahead and highlight that. Right here, you're going to see my username. This is going to be things like the whiteboard session info and how you can share this with your students. It's very simple. You would just select it and then you get something like a QR code and a URL. This is great for student engagement, but we're not going to worry about that too much today. Um, just know that that's where it will be and it will show up in this opposite corner where I'm pointing with the yellow arrow. There is a circle with a face icon. That is where you're going to sign in and sign out. So Ruben showed you how you can do single sign on and you can do the same thing for whiteboard. So you can use Google sign on Microsoft um, and you can even use your own username and password as well to get started. Now this option is available to you um, to make it easier for you to get started during the day. I'm using Windows, which is allowing me to use my Windows single sign on and get started. But now that I'm signed in, we're good to go. Um, there are some other features that you'll be looking at within Whiteboard. Uh, in this upper corner here where I'm circling with the yellow, you're going to see a couple of different options. Those are going to be more of your navigation tools for minimizing or maximizing, um, even accessing some settings. We're not going to worry about that too much either. Now down at the bottom, you're going to see the main toolbar. The main toolbar has so many different tools and features that we're going to be looking at today. Um, and I will go through a few of those. There are many different tools available to you and they're very helpful. And I'll explain more in depth about what we'll be looking at. In this corner, you can also read that there is another type of toolbar, which we call the floating toolbar. And it's in this corner. So the two different things that I want to point out is that the main toolbar can be moved across your screen. So you can move it to the side, to the top, or even down at the bottom where I prefer it. Um, but the floating toolbar can go wherever you want it. So if it's ever in your way, you can move it out. Don't worry, um, it's fully customizable. So let's get started. I know there's a lot, but really for the purposes of today's presentation, we're going to be simply focusing on the floating toolbar and the main toolbar. I wanna make sure that you all feel comfortable. And the idea behind this is just to get a brief introduction to the tools so that you feel a little more confident when you start to use this type of software in your classrooms. So now that we're going to go into some of the tool features, I'm gonna press this. So something that you might have noticed already is that I've already been using the floating toolbar quite a lot. And the way that I'm using it is I'm using my mouse to navigate. And so this is allowing me to use the mouse to draw arrows. It's allowing me to select different arrows, but it's also allowing me to present this to you. What you've also already noticed is that within my Viewboard whiteboard, you can have multiple different pages on your canvas. And as I showed you already, you can use the move toolbar to move it wherever you want. But now here are two different features that I want us to just get used to briefly. And this is going to be especially helpful for your classrooms when you start to create lessons. And that's going to be the second icon here on the floating toolbar that I'm I am pointing at with the yellow arrow. 
right now it has an image of a green chalkboard with a person instructing in the front. Basically what that means is that I am in prepare mode. I am allowed to um, go to all the different tools. I can move around. I see that upper toolbar that I talked about earlier for minimizing and maximizing the screen. But if I were to say select the tool, so if I am using my left click on my mouse, now it's going to put me into present mode. What you might notice is that entire upper bar portion that we saw earlier has now just disappeared. And now we can focus directly on the content. So we see some teachers deciding to use this feature if they want their students to focus only on the presentation at hand. Um, there are some other features that I will get to later as well, but it does minimize some of the usability in the sense that you won't be able to resize an image or resize a shape, but that's purposeful. That's so that when your students are going up to interact with the board, you don't have to worry about them accidentally editing your presentation that you worked a long time on. So that's a very helpful feature. And to get back to that prepare mode, all you have to do is select the square again. And now we're back in the mode. You can tell because that bar is up at the top again. Another thing that I want to talk about is the ability to paste from clipboard. So this is going to allow you to take any text or images from a web page that you're interested in and put that directly in simply by pressing copy on the image and then using this clipboard shape and it's going to po uh, paste to the panel. Another thing that I want to point out are these arrows at the bottom. Here we have a left facing and a right facing arrow and you may have already noticed I've been using those to advance my slides. So if I want to go back to the previous page, I just click that left arrow and then to go forward, I press the right. I do want to make note on the main toolbar, you will notice down in this corner that there are more arrows. So one of my colleagues made a great mention about this. While there are two different arrows, these do completely different things. So which I showed you right now with the left and right arrow to advance your slides, these arrows in this corner are undo and redo. So whatever it makes sense for you to um, understand that these are different features, that's great. I think my colleague um, calls these eyebrows. So if that is something that sticks out to you, whatever makes you have a, that cue to know that it's different, good to know. But don't worry, um, there are more things available too. So if you are doing more creation for your content, you're gonna correct, collect um, these new page right here, or you can go down to page management. By selecting page management, I can give you a preview of what we're gonna be looking at today. And this is just easy for your editing to go back and forth wherever you need when you're making your lesson. And again, as we have the finches, you'll notice I like to put these into my presentation throughout because the ViewSonic finches, um, that is our mascot. And I just think it's super cute and helpful. And if it makes you understand the lesson a little bit more, that's great for me. So let's get a little bit further. And now we're going to talk about the main toolbar. So again, this section of the presentation is just to get you a little, little more familiarized with these different features. And then in the next portion, we're going to go into how to use them. So one very, very powerful tool of this software is this hand icon. Now this hand icon that I'm pointing to with the yellow arrow is what we call the infinite canvas. Within the MyViewboard ecosystem, we are able to use whiteboard to have multiple different pieces on each slide. So I already showed you how you can do page management and you can add new slides and you can navigate, but you can also have an infinite canvas on each of those slides. That means that you can keep multiple different pieces of information on one slide so that you can keep ideas grouped together. I'm going to go ahead and show you how that would work now. So again, we're going to be looking at where I'm pointing with this yellow arrow. It's the hand icon. I'm going to select it. So if you're using a view board in your classroom, it's as easy as just pressing with one finger onto the infinite canvas icon. Or if you're using a mouse or a trackpad, just click it. So something that just popped up right now is something that is another powerful tool with all of these main toolbar features is the ability to double click. 
So one click will allow you to select the icon, but selecting it again will provide you more options and details. So that is the same thing for Infinite Canvas. If I select it once, I can drag across and see different parts of the canvas. Now, if you're using a view board and using the touch capabilities, you can just use your finger and drag. If you're using a mouse, go ahead and click and now drag at the same time. So as you can see, I can get very far and I'm actually moving across the canvas. I can go back to what we were looking at earlier and it's all here. I can also zoom in. So again, because I'm using a mouse, I can use a scroll wheel. So I can scroll in and I can scroll out. If you're using a view board and you're using the touch features, it's as simple as just doing a pinch gesture. So either pinch out or pinch in. So let's say you're using the infinite canvas. You have really zoomed in. You're farther from where you wanted to start. This is where that double click comes back into handy. So again, looking at where I'm pointing with the yellow arrow, you can select the hand and then select it again. And now you have a new feature. So this is a very powerful tool. You have something here with a circle and an arrow, and this is a reset button. So there's two things you can do. You can either select the reset button and it'll take you exactly where you had the page before, or let me go ahead and zoom in again. I can select the hand again, and there is a outline of a box. And now I can use that to navigate quickly to the portion that I want. Of course, I can always go back to that reset button and go back to where I started. So this is a very, very important tool for my view board and something that we feel is very unique and very fun about this whiteboarding software. You have multiple different areas that you can write on. You can have multiple students um, select different objects and move them all across the canvas, but you don't have to worry about getting lost because you always have that reset button. Now, another important feature is this dotted box with a blue arrow in it. This is our select tool. So notice that the infinite canvas and select tool are different. So you may be seeing the hand and thinking that's how you move an object, but remember that is for the infinite canvas. For select, you wanna select this tool here. So you're gonna click on it once. And now this is going to allow you to select different objects. So this is an image here that I've created and I can select this. I can select this text box here or even this cute finch over on this corner. Again, you can also have the ability to lasso objects together as well. So I'll show you a little bit more of that later on, but that is a good differentiator between the infinite canvas and select tool. We'll practice it so you remember, but that's just to get started. Of course, we have multiple different annotation tools. This is a whiteboard software after all. After all. So by clicking it, I'm able to go to the pen. I've been using our laser pen, which is great for getting people's attention to certain places, but I don't have to erase it because it will disappear after each stroke. Let's look at the other pen options. This is going to be your base pen when you're using your view board or my view board software. This is going to allow you to have basic pen movements. And of course you can change things like the thickness, the opacity, and of course, the most fun of all, the color. I have a very specific shade of purple that I like, and I really enjoy this feature because I can find that exact color and make it the color that I choose. So of course, whenever you find a color that you want to use, make sure you select it, and then you can begin writing. Now we have an eraser tool. Very important for those mistakes. Um, you can select the eraser, begin erasing as normal, or again, you can use that double click function that's going to allow you to have multiple different options. This here is a lasso erase tool. To show you how that would work, I could just select a portion and it will delete that image. Another thing that I can do is I can erase all strokes or I can clear all. The difference here is that clear all strokes will just get rid of all the pen work or annotations that you've done on the page where clear all will get rid of images that you haven't locked. More on that later. One other feature that I want to show you is down here. Let me click on the laser pen and demonstrate that one more time. 
you see a square. But notice here in my tool diagram, there's a different image for shapes and lines. Something to note when you're using the shapes and lines tool is that the shape that you're using will show up in the main toolbar. So earlier, before I did anything, it appeared just like this image. But once I used it and I selected a square, that's what it appeared. So if you feel like you're missing that tool, it's still there, but it might just be hidden behind a different type of shape that you selected previously. Same thing from the pen, you can change the thickness of the line, the color, the shape. There are many different tools with, uh, within the shape ability that you can access. And then of course, using the text is very similar. You're going to select the text. I can select anywhere on the canvas and begin writing. So it depends if you prefer your own penmanship or if you feel like you have a little bit of messier penmanship. If you want to prepare your lessons ahead of time, maybe the text option is a good feature for you. Now, when I mentioned that Whiteboard was class, uh, cross-platform um, compatible, something that is also important is the ability to have folders and cloud drives that connect to different cloud integrations. To show you how this works, I can click on the file manager icon and I would be able to either save as this folder, save if it's a previously saved canvas, create new, or even export to a PDF or PowerPoint, whatever it may be for your students to better have this information. But one thing in this magic box, which I'll show more later, is that we have things called cloud integrations. So for me, I use OneDrive. And here I'm able to access all of my files that are cloud-based. What this means is that I don't need to be using the same machine to be able to access files. So what that could mean for you is that you could work on your lesson on your laptop at home and go into your class the next day, sign in, and then all of your cloud drives will be ready to be accessed. So you can access all of your different files directly from the viewboard without having to plug in your computer. So if that's something that makes sense for you, um, it's a very simple process to get set up, but something that we highly recommend. And again, we have our Finch giving us a recommendation about the undo and redo. Um, those redo buttons and undo, which I think is very powerful, will only apply to the slide that you're on. So if you mess up only on the slide, when you want to undo, it won't undo progress on your different slides as well. So I think that's very powerful, especially for me, I make a lot of mistakes. So I wanna make sure that I am not messing up any of the things that I do get right. So let's move on. I call this the main toolbar lesson enhancers. We're not gonna go into depth about these today. I really just wanna go over the basics and get you familiar and comfortable with what we're looking at. I briefly showed you the magic box and some of the abilities that you can use with cloud integrations. But I do wanna to show too, this icon at the bottom of the toolbar, which has four blue squares. Now, this is unique to using my Viewboard Whiteboard on Windows. This allows me to select an icon and go to my desktop. So I have this because I'm using a Windows Surface Pro you might have this if you're using another Windows enabled machine. Um, this allows you to access more content. So here you're gonna see my desktop. And all I did was select that Windows icon. And now if I wanna pull up a web page, so earlier we were talking about community, I can go through the page and show you some of the ViewSonic information. I can go to our dashboard and I can begin also marking up things by selecting this tool. So I can put bars around things that I find helpful or useful. I can add shapes. I can add notes using text as well. And then when I'm all done, I can take a screenshot. And that screenshot is going to allow me to be able to access all this information and have it post within the canvas. So this is just a fun and helpful tool if you're using the Windows platform that I wanted to show. And here you go. It puts directly into the canvas. 
So we're going to talk about these features later on in the series. So if this is something that you want to learn more about, we invite you to join us again later on. Uh, we'll go through each of these and how you can use them within your lessons and your classrooms. But let's go ahead and talk about Magic Box a little bit more. Um, I do believe that we have another poll question that will be being sent to you all right now. I believe I misplaced it. There we go. Um, so as that poll is coming up for you, I'm going to briefly show you some more tools in the Magic Box. So if you joined us earlier on in the summer webinar, you may have already been in our entire webinar directly about Magic Box. But if you're new, I will go ahead and show you a brief overview of what that looks like. So again, I'm going to click on the Magic Box using my mouse. And I want to give you an overview of what this will look like. Again, we'll have a webinar dedicated to Magic Box because there are so many powerful tools directly in here that are gonna be helpful for you. So we already talked about file management in the cloud drive, so I won't spend any more time on that, but you're gonna notice a few other tools. So we have a yellow sticky note, so you can add sticky notes to the canvas. We have math and science tools. So if you're using Windows, you have many different options. If you're using it on your view board, you may notice that you have the dice, a ruler, there are other tools available to you as well. But right now, you may be missing something like a compass. But what I really like is that these tools are available. You have the ruler that will be able to be added onto the canvas. So these are very helpful. You have a surface camera. So this is my um, document camera icon here. And this would actually allow me to put any real world documents and show my class um, if I wanted to use my webcam. So if you're more comfortable using a physical piece of paper to grade homework in front of the students, you can place that paper under the camera and it will appear on the view board. So that's very helpful as well. Some unique features about Magic Box as well is we have integrations with YouTube. So you can find and search for educational YouTube videos to share with your class. And the great thing is that they will have no ads. So you can have a lesson, you can go through the video without having to wait for that minute, 30 seconds, whatever it may be to get to the video. We also have image search. So I was looking at how to increase my fall vibes within my um, virtual classroom today. So I was looking up pumpkin garland. And there you, as you can see, there are multiple different features here and different images that I can add. It's very fun, adds a little bit more color to your presentations and your work, your work lessons as well. Um, now, these icons at the end are more for student engagement, and there will be more on that later. That is a little more advanced, so we don't need to worry about that today. But for your information, we have the ability to have students share files directly to the view board using something called Grow. So that is that little paper airplane icon. And then we have things like pop quiz and we also have polls. So these are just great um, lesson enhancers, but also good for uh, preparation and understanding your students' assessments and also measuring um, things that will help them grow. So helping them with that growth mindset to continue to learn, but also to help you better understand where they fit within the overall um, classroom environment. So there's a lot of great tools as you can see in Magic Box, and I don't wanna to spend too much more time on this. We will get to it more in future webinars, but I do want to go and take a small break here. We have another poll for you. And now in this poll, go ahead and take a break and look at this. I'm gonna briefly take a sip of water while you answer that poll. And now we're gonna go ahead and take all of the tools that we just saw and start learning how we could actually put that into a lesson. So I'll be back in one. Okay, thank you for your patience with me. Um, now I'm gonna be talking about lesson planning. So I showed you some brief ways that you can use the different annotation tools and just a brief introduction. There's one more piece to the puzzle that I have not shown you yet. 
and it's down pointing to where I have this arrow. In the very corner, there's a purple arrow pointing down to an icon. And this icon is gray and it has an image of a mountain. And here you're gonna be able to access different types of templates. By selecting this bird, it's gonna take me to the ViewSonic Originals. And I'm gonna place this over here since it popped up in my other monitor. But here you're gonna be able to access different templates and lesson plans and graphics. So throughout this presentation, I've actually used many different originals for my backgrounds, including that virtual classroom, also some of those very cute Finch uh, graphics that I keep using. All of that is accessible in ViewSonic Originals. And why I bring this up is so that when you are starting out with my view board and you don't know where to begin when it comes to lesson planning, this is a great place to start out just so that you have a tool or even a guide about how you can start using some of our um, annotation tools and engagement with your students as well on those ViewSonic Originals. Now you can, of course, import those um, existing lessons from originals, or you can use your own existing lessons directly from that file management and those cloud integrations. So again, those cloud integrations are going to include Dropbox, OneDrive, Google, anything like that is going to be able to ex be accessible to you. There's multiple different versions available. But now I'm going to show you how you can take those lessons and import them directly into my Viewboard Whiteboard. So if you have used different types of software in the past, or you have lesson plans that you've already taken the time to create, you can take them and import them into my Viewboard and make them um, able to be engaged by your students. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we're going to take your existing lessons and we're gonna put them into Whiteboard. Now there's five main things that are gonna be helpful if you're going to use this. First is going to be Magic Box. Now I showed you that there's the file management within Magic Box, and that is also the best place to import existing PDFs, images, or other documents that you might have. Even if they are previously from a different company software, we have the ability to convert it into our OLF format. For your information, OLF is just our term for open learning format. And that allows us to be able to have that cross-platform compatibility that allows us to go and use Windows, use iPad. We're able to take the different files and make sure that they're used throughout. This is something that I can show you as we go down. So what I'm gonna do, again, using Infinite Canvas, I told you it's gonna be handy for you, um, but it's also very helpful for me during my presentation. I am going to select on the canvas and now drag down. So what you're gonna see here is I have already imported a document. So this one is just subtracting multiples of 10. So imagine this for any uh, subject that you're teaching, whether it be music, science, math, like I'm showing here, or even English. If you have an existing lesson or even a um, practice document that you wanna put in here, the way that you would do it is, I will show you again, you would go down to Magic Box. Again, I'm pointing with it with this yellow arrow. You would select Magic Box. You would navigate to your file of choice. So for me, it would end up being the OneDrive. And now I can choose any file that I want. There is a search feature that will allow me to look for a specific file type that I would want. So as you can see, some of the options um, are notebook and flip chart. So that's what I was mentioning. If you have a document from a previous software company that you used to use, you can still use those lessons within the ViewSonic ecosystem. All you would do is select it and import it and it's ready to go. So for me, as you can see, I can either choose existing OLFs and I can show you what that might look like. So if I want to do my view board basics, I could select on the OLF. And now what's gonna show up is a screen of the entire canvas. It's going to allow me to select either individual or I can select all. Um, for this case, um, when I did the lesson plan for the subtracting multiples of 10, I just selected one 
and I imported it. So when you're ready to do that, you can press import. I'm not gonna do that now, just for the purposes of showing you how you would use it for this homework, for example. I've already showed you that infinite canvas, that number two is going to be important because imagine you're in the classroom, you have many students, um, you probably have students in the back of the classroom that may have trouble seeing this very tiny font. So what you can do if you're using your panel, you can pinch in, or if you're using it on your um, computer, you can use that scroll wheel on, on the mouse and you can move in to the problems that you wanna focus on. This is all, also helpful for attention. So making sure that students are only focusing on the areas of the campus that you want them to be looking at in this moment, but it's also helpful for that um, visibility as well. So making sure that the information is accessible to all those students and learners in your classroom. So let's go back and look at our reminders. So I'm gonna use that infinite canvas tool and I'm gonna scroll down here. So our reminders here for using the existing lesson is using a pen, eraser, and shape. So let's see how that would work. Of course, I will select the pen. I will use the double click feature. I will navigate to my pen of choice and the color. So I will select blue and now I'll be able to start writing on here. So if you're working with your students, you can have them either call out answers or you can invite students to come up to the board as well. And they can either use a stylus or their finger, whatever you feel comfortable with them interacting with the board and they can start answering the questions. So for example, if I want to highlight um, only a certain set of answers or questions that I want the students to look at, I can go to the shape tool, I can navigate to the color, and I can focus attention on just these three. Now I can go to the pen and have a student start solving. So you can have them start writing around or say they get an answer wrong. Now you have the ability to either have them erase, you can have them erase using the lasso tool, you can have them using just the regular eraser, or a fun feature about this, especially if you're having multiple learners use this at the same time, you can use those different eraser icons that I talked about briefly earlier. So I can use the erase all strokes to get rid of the pen marks so that a new student can come up and they don't have to worry about already seeing the answer. So let's go ahead and show this. So I can either choose to do it from every page so I can start over the lesson after every class period, or I can just do it for this page specifically. I will just choose this page for now. And now you can see those answers have disappeared. But that shape icon that I added is still there. So let's replicate this. I'm going to go ahead and use that undo button for the first time today. And I'm gonna go back to the eraser icon, click on it again, click it one more time. And now I'm gonna use the option where it says clear all. Now, pay attention to this. When I press clear all, it will get rid of all shapes that are not locked. So what that means is I have the option to go to an image and make sure that it's locked to the canvas. So that means that if I did it properly, and we'll go ahead and scroll out to make sure that I did, using the infinite canvas, I will go down, I will select on the canvas using the select tool. Now you can see I have this lock icon. That lock icon means that when I press clear all, this document will remain, but all of the other shapes that you can see that don't have a lock icon will disappear. So let's go ahead and see that in motion. So I'm going to go to the eraser, I'm gonna select it twice, and now I'm gonna hit clear all. And that's the magic. So you can create these lessons ahead of time, preset them, and when you're in class, you don't have to worry about hand erasing or being um, taking that tedious time to go through it. So that's one way that you can import previous lessons, but let's look at how you can actually create your own lesson. So I showed you that lock icon. A few of you might be scratching your head right now wondering how I even got to that. Well, that is a handy tool that we call the adorning menu. So I know, I know I said that I, we would only be looking at the floating toolbar and the main toolbar, but I kind of lied. We are gonna be looking at the adorning menu also. It's very simple. Um, once you get used to it, 
and know how to access it, it will really enhance your lessons, especially if you want to try to take on your own creativity and create your own lesson. So let's take a look at what this looks like. In here, I have an image showing what the adorning menu is. The adorning menu is accessed using that select tool. You have many different icons. You don't need to worry about all of them right now. I think for right now, maybe three that you want to focus on is going to be this trash con icon. And let me go ahead and highlight these for you so you can see it. And I'll take this opportunity to also zoom in so that we're all on the same page. For now, just focus on this trash can icon, this red lock, and this double yellow page. So the lock is the lock icon, the trash is the delete, but this yellow page icon is the copy. So that's where you can use the clipboard from earlier. So now let's go ahead and reset the page using the infinite canvas and hit the reset tool. And I wanna go ahead and show this in action. So I'm gonna move down by pressing the screen. And this is what I wanna show you. This is a great way to get students involved in interacting with your uh, whiteboard. So I have a few steps here. We're first going to insert a shape and this can be a circle, square, triangle, whatever it may be, or it could also be an image depending on what you want to do for your classroom. We're gonna use the select tool. We're gonna practice using the adorning menu, using those few icons that I talked about earlier. And then the last one here, remember to save. Most important, remember to save. So in this image here, I have a mock-up of what this could look like. So I have a counting activity and I have chosen that I would like to use a circle. So I'm gonna select the circle. I'm going to select this color and now I'm going to drag it on the canvas. So what I want to do is I want to create multiple copies of this circle and I want the students to be able to count based on whatever number I have written in the square. So we're going to use that copy icon that I showed you earlier, which is the yellow paper. We're going to press copy. I'm going to go down to the floating toolbar with the clipboard and I'm going to press the clipboard icon. What you're going to notice is that it pasted directly on the shape. That's okay. We're just going to move it. And we're gonna keep doing that. So now I'm going to, you can either do paste again and it will show up in the same spot, or you can select again and you can use the, um, the select tool in the copy as well. I'm just gonna keep taking items from the clipboard. I'm gonna keep adding them. Um, another fun shortcut is you can use the select tool, lasso around them and then be able to copy all of them at once. But I'm not gonna do that now. I'm just going to continue to paste. And now once you are satisfied with however many shapes you want, now we can look at the adorning menu. Now the adorning menu, like we said, you can either delete or you can lock the shape. I want to lock this shape so that the students don't think that they should pull from there. Um, but now I can either choose to start moving the pieces around or I can also do something called a movable lock. So I mentioned that we don't need to look at all of them, but if you are curious about using something called the movable lock, it's right next to the lock icon. And also great feature, you can hover over any icon and it will give you a hint at to what it is. So especially if you're learning, this is this is good news for you. Um, the movable lock basically means that it's getting rid of these four corners where I can resize the shape. And why that's important is that if you're inviting students up, it should be easy for them to select an object and move it around without accidentally resizing. So if you want them to move around, that's how it should work. And that's why the movable lock will be helpful for you. So I'm gonna select that and I can either, I will put the movable lock on this, movable lock here, and I'll do that for all of these. And so now you can either have the students begin coming up and interacting, or as we mentioned at the very beginning, the ability to change into present mode. So I wanna show you the difference that I talked about earlier. 
between prepare and present. We are in that prepare mode. So when I click on the object, you're only going to see the movable lock icon. But if I were to get rid of that, you have a lot of different features within that adorning menu. When I go into present mode, if I were to click on this shape, only a few items appear. And that is purposeful so that the students are not changing the color or interacting with the shape in a way that you did not approve of previously. So I'm going to go back, back into prepare mode. I'm going to change this back to the movable lock. And now I'm going to show you ways that a student can actually interact. So you can invite them up. They can use their finger to select an object. Make sure you have the select tool on um, and you can start moving the shape around. And as you can see, I cannot resize that shape whatsoever. If I want to do this in present mode, I can do the same thing. Have the students come up to the shape and start moving it around. It's very simple, um, very helpful for them. It's really up to you if you want to be in prepare or present, but this is a great activity that you can always restart. You can get rid of the number, ask for different um, numbers here. So maybe I ask for, I want three this time, and you can have different students engage and interact. So there's different ways that you can make your own lesson um, and make it very engaging for your students. Of course, remember to save. You spend a lot of time making that. You don't want to lose it. So even though you use Magic Box to import, the way that you save is using this manila envelope shape. You're going to select the icon. You're going to go here and make sure that you save it. If you need to save as do it, it's going to be very important. And of course, if you want to share any of these lessons with your students, you can also choose to export. It's up to you, but I definitely want to make sure that it's ingrained in all of us to remember to save. So with that, I'm going to take another brief pause. I believe we have another poll. I might be wrong. There we go. I see it now. But we've learned a lot. I hope you've gotten the basics down. Um, if you have more questions, please feel free to use that Q&A um, uh, chat box and we'll have someone reach out to you. But the idea here is just to get a little more comfortable, a little more familiar with those shapes. And hopefully, if you join us for future webinars, you'll feel more confident in some of those features that we discuss. So now that you've all answered the poll, I am going to lead us into a quick game. This is my favorite part of all of our webinars is we have to check for understanding. We've learned a lot so far. If you're new to Whiteboard, um, there might be some concepts that were a little more difficult for you or brand new things that you've never seen before. So the whole point is to have a little bit of fun in these webinars, but also learn but most importantly, let's play a game. So how this is going to work is I invite all of you to answer my questions by using the chat box to answer me. I, I have a list of questions of things that we've talked about today, and I want your help in getting this Finch all the way to the finish line. So this is using some of the different features that we've already looked at today. So if you're interested in learning more about how I created this game, I'm very happy to go over that later with you, but let's get started. So my very first question that I have for all of you is, can you save files to Google Drive? Now you can put all of your answers in that chat box and I will look at the answers that are coming in. Awesome, okay, across the board, yes, you are correct. So. Now we need to score our points. So I'm going to use the dice that I showed you earlier in Magic Box how to access. And now I'm going to just select that dice and let's see what we land on. Four. Awesome. One, two, three, four. I'm counting this as the start space. Okay. <laughs> so next question. I want to save my lesson. What icon should I use? And I can help you out with this one. Should you choose Magic Box? or that folder icon. Okay, awesome, I see. Folder, folder, perfect. Awesome, great job, everyone. Now I'm gonna use my little spinner wheel. I'm gonna press the spinner and let's see what we land on. Oh, just one, but you know what? That's okay, I think we're here. We might have skipped a few, that's okay. Question now. I copied a picture onto my canvas 
where do I go to paste it or how do I paste it? If you don't remember the exact name, you can tell me where to find it or locate it. Awesome, clipboard. Perfect. Great answers, everyone. So let's see where we go now. Two, okay. That means I just get asking more questions. This is fine. Okay. Next question, and I'm looking at my question notes that I have. Will using the erase all strokes trash can erase my imported document? And I'll clarify with that one, my imported document is locked. So will it erase that? Nope, perfect. So let's, let's see what we can score now. Let's see if we can get a little higher than two this time. And at least a little bit better. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. The menu that appears when using the select tool is called what? So this was that third toolbar that I kind of lied about. <laughs> Do we remember the name? Okay, we'll get a couple of answers coming in. Adorning, perfect. Nailed it. Okay, perfect. Let's see the score. Six. Okay, that's great. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's send this finch home. So hopefully this is the last question. Let's see. Okay, I have a good question. What tool would I use to move an object? What tool would I use to move an object on the canvas? Select, perfect, yes. So if you did say hand, remember that is for the infinite canvas. I know that those two concepts can be a little more difficult, but when you start using it, it will become second nature to you. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel. Three. Awesome. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. We still have one more question. So to finish this out, my question to you all is, what is one new thing you learned today, if any? And it can be anything you want to talk about. I'm very curious to hear. Okay. I'm getting some great, awesome. I like all your answers. Importing content, you can import smart files, the lock, magic box, accessing Dropbox, Dropbox, pen colors, lesson planning, erasing, document cameras. Too many to name. I'm glad to hear that. To save everything. Yes, very important. Always save your documents. Okay, let's send the Finch home. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for helping me with that game. I had a lot of fun talking with all of you today. I hope you learned something and I really invite you all to join us in the next few sessions of our fall webinar series. Uh, maybe my virtual classroom will have more fall decorations. It's always fun to add um, more of the different icons, um, but I had a great time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Now I'm gonna pass it back over to Ruben. So thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. And such a smart bunch, would you say Haley? I mean, I gotta say. Absolutely. Their answer so diligently and just responding. So, thank you, community, honestly, for um, just being engaged with us during this hour. Hopefully, this was very informative. Uh, I got a chance to read some of your chats and your posts in our community uh, platform. So, I got to tell you, okay, the moment of truth. You know, the whole point was to get you all to learn a little bit more about what we're doing in our community. And we've got 12 participants. And I reached out to everybody that if we can reach our goal to 15 participants to enter a comment into the community platform, that you know what, we'll unlock two drawings as opposed to one uh, for what we've got planned for today. Now, having said all that, I'm going to give everybody a quick 30 seconds. If you can rush to the community platform, leave your comment to say, hey, this is just feedback that you received overall. This really helps out. Our team, especially giving major kudos to our presenter, Haley Hunt, on everything you just learned. So I'm going to give everybody 30 more seconds just to see if we can enter another comment 
just to make sure that we capture everybody before we spin that wheel and actually pick one lucky winner from today's webinar to win a $25 Amazon gift card. So the countdown begins as we as we uh, end, end this sentence. <laughs> um, so it looks like, oh, it looks very good, awesome. And for folks that are in the chat, please give loud of emoticons round of applause to Miss Haley for being a presenter. If we get a ton of emoticons, I'll tell you what, I just might as well just go for it and let's just do, do two drawings. What do you think, Haley? Does that sound good? Okay. Yes. Awesome. I love it. Okay. I see, I see the love. I see the, the hands clapping. All right. I see a lot of hand raises. Fantastic. I think people are just ready. Okay. Excellent. All right, folks. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can spin this wheel. And remember, thanks to all of your input and joining us, we are doing this, right? We get to do this uh, together. So grateful for you all to be there. And again, this is just our first installment. So if you are looking towards obtaining more uh, sessions like this, please inform your colleagues, your teachers, your fellow uh, mates, if you will, to be able to join us in this platform. And we'll do fun things like this uh, every month. So the frequency will depend on uh, how much you want to see new content, new ideas. And this is something that we'll gear our presentations around, okay? Excellent. All right, we're gonna spin this wheel. So the first lucky winner is, let's do it, let's do it. Here's the spin. And round of applause to, oh, it looked like it was going to Trent, but it's Jennifer, man. All right, you're our first winner. Fantastic. You'll be getting an email from me. So fantastic. So we got Jennifer Mann as our first winner. But guess what? We're going to spin this wheel one more time. All right, here we go. Countdown, please. Three, two, one. And let's spin this wheel. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no way. And last but not least, it looks like Marsha Johnson. You're going home with a $25 Amazon gift card. Fantastic. It took community to get us all here. So appreciate you all. As mentioned earlier, if you'd like to join us in other webinar installments, we'll do fun things like this. And again, all you have to do is just go into our community platform, just say hello, uh, engage in our content that we post, and we'll do fun things like this time after time. All right, folks, without further ado, I wish you a pleasant evening to wherever you're logging into. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.